All right, welcome everybody to Cinema Royale. I am Travis Hobson of Punch Drunk Critics. It's been a while since we've done this. I haven't talked to Chris on this show since July when we talked about... I thought you were avoiding me, frankly. Deadpool Wolverine? <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, so it's good to have Chris yeah. McCray back. And uh, we're going to be talking about The Substance. Uh, now, this movie... <laughs> I was hearing wild things about this film. Long where to begin? Where to be? Where to begin? Where to begin? Before I had a chance to even see it, I heard so much about it already. You saw it before me, and that's where I started <laughs> crazy shit about it. Uh, I was still not prepared uh, for when I went to see it in myself, and it. I mean, I we'll, we'll get into why my, my thoughts on it, but Chris, you saw it ahead of me. Uh, what, what are your thoughts about the substance which stars Demi Moore, Margaret Qualley, God, Margaret Qualley, um, and Dennis Quaid? Talk to me about the substance, man. <laughs> so I saw it in Montreal. I I I saw it in Montreal at a pre-screening for TIFF, right? Like a while before it was going to show there. So I saw it like a month ago. Yeah, and uh, it was at a press screening. And usually the press screenings are very quiet in Montreal. Like not much happens, right? Pretty conservative audience. Yeah. But it was raucous. People were going nuts because it started getting crazier and crazier and crazier. And by that last half hour, people were like, were like going nuts, right? And it was, I, I had no idea what to expect. I don't know. For some reason, I thought, you know, because the director's French, it would be like arty or something like that. I never saw Revenge, which apparently is great too. Um Coralie Falja. I did like for, uh, I did, and I was kind of I did like Revenge. Yeah. 2017. Revenge. Yeah, so I was kind of I don't know, but it's right. Until the right is the lead, yeah, right. 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 Is the lead character. It's 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 actually really good. Feminist uh in a way like this movie is. Uh this movie <laughs> takes it to an extreme like everything's extreme in this movie. Good. Well, because I mean, I heard it go to I went to Cannes, and I was expect and Mubi was putting it out. I thought it was going to be like artsy fartsy, but it was not. It was crazy. Uh, I I I, I had a blast with it. I mean, I like body horror in general, and I like Demi Moore, and I like Demi Moore's body, and I like uh, Margaret. <laughs> you know, so you, like, if you were in this movie you would be dennis quaid uh so I would, let's <laughs> i would be dennis quaid in this movie i, I interviewed him literally right after <laughs> right after seeing wow. the substance for, for reagan and i was like and i you said interviewed oh, I him for reagan i know i kind of regretted it after a while but then i I, I spoke spoke to I, him I, I could have interviewed him for reagan that would have been fair though because i acted that movie was trash and, and I, I, I think I, Reagan's I, trash. So I, I would I, the wrong. He probably, would still, he probably would have still been into it, though. He's a pretty like fair guy, I think. But I but I mentioned to him, I saw I saw the substance and he started to laugh and he was like, holy shit. What do you think of that? And I was like, I just saw it. And he, he said it was quite it's quite the one two punch Reagan and the substance. No kidding. Um, so he's let's, so let's, let's sort of tell people him what the eating substance shrimp, is. him eating shrimp in that movie is the that most gross thing of all. I see it's gross. Every scene in this movie is gross almost, except for anything with Margaret Qualley in it. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but anyway, let's tell let's sort of tell people what the substance is about without giving away too too much here. So Demi Moore plays uh what's her name? Was Elizabeth Sparkle? Elizabeth Sparkle. Elizabeth Sparkle, a former a, 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 a Academy Award winning actress who becomes famous as a uh like a, a an aerobics instructor in, in a, like a, a Jane show. Fonda Think like, a, the like Jane, a Jane yeah the Fonda. Jane Fonda type wor like workouts like workout videos she has a show like that uh she's famous for that uh she's hitting 50 and apparently that's just too much for Dennis Quaid's character to handle uh, he's like the owner of the network uh so he fires her on her birthday her 50th birthday after saying some pretty heinous stuff about about women by the way uh, and he goes. And he gives her a joy of French cooking book because I hear do this now. <laughs> right. <laughs> so he goes looking for somebody to replace her. Uh, Sparkle learns about the. She becomes a, a, a candidate for this thing called the substance. Uh, she has no idea what it is. Neither do we at first. It's this rather sickly looking green fluid. It looks like mutagen from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies. Yeah, that's what it looks uh, like. They're just yeah, going to turn exactly it into like. like rock uh, and basically what this thing will do is you inject it and it will produce a a uh, younger, more vital, more a perfect version of yourself. Uh, and this thing, I mean, it, like the movie opens with like a shot of an egg being injected with a substance and then it immediately duplicates. Uh, so when uh, Sparkle injects herself with this thing, she literally like cracks open like an egg and gives birth to, to Margaret Qualley, which is so goddamn stomach churning. 
I was like, oh man, this is so goddamn gross. But that's not even the remote. That's not even the, the thing that's even closely like. Oh, it's not even. It's just the tip of the ice. It gets so right. much. It's not even close that. to how gross this thing gets. Um, there are rules to follow though. Like think like like if you owned like a Mogwai, there are like all these rules. One week on, one week off. One week on, one week off. The person who's off is like in a catatonic state, basically. Uh, and if you cheat, you're basically stealing from the other person. Like you're stealing yeah. from the other. So you have to live in this perfect balance, this perfect harmony for this whole thing to work. And of course, it doesn't work. Of course, it's not going to work when you got like, a young... Yeah, like, goes pretty quick. Right, you're right. It goes haywire pretty damn fast. Uh, and then things get really ugly and this thing turns into like a Cronenberg movie slash a trauma film. It turns like into all sorts of <laughs> it gets it gets nutty. I don't, really I'm not gonna lie. Demi starts to look a little rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, you might say that. Uh oh man, I went into this not knowing just how far this thing was gonna go. I'm strong, I'm a strong guy. I don't get sick easy. This movie had my stomach in knots. And it's not yeah, just like I the wildly over yeah. the top stuff. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of the needle stuff and the cutting stuff, and that stuff. That's the stuff that gets me. Like I can handle all the yeah, I mean, stuff, like, all the top stuff, like the pros. That requires all these sorts of prosthetics, the Cronenberg style stuff, where people get mutated and all sorts of shit like that. I can handle that. It's the other stuff, the needle stuff. Like, oh god, that stuff was grossing me out. This movie had me. Doing yeah. cartwheels, man. I was like, "What the hell is happening here?" <laughs> I was I was having my breakfast while I was watching it because I sometimes uh, bring a little breakfast into the movie theater. Yeah. It's early, and I was kind of like, "I don't need to be eating this." One. <laughs> <laughs> but as a, like, so, oh, so, as a as egg, a as a egg sandwich egg sitting quite right, <laughs> oh, I couldn't imagine. You know what? I, was I eating something? No, I wasn't. It was another movie. I was eating something. It was at Wolf's. I was chowing down on something but uh not this i'm glad i wasn't eating anything during this um but all as, as a commentary on <laughs> on hollywood's ridiculous beauty standards how do you think the movie fares though oh i think i very well i mean i think that it's it's one of those movies that you know it's interesting that a woman directed a body horror movie and it's and it's and it's funny because if you look at the next kind of great tradition of body horror that's come out the last couple of really good ones have all been directed by women such as Titan you know I would say that was another really good one and I think that they're they've got a handle on that a lot better than people do because you know their bodies are judged all the time and it's pretty potent that it's Demi Moore because I remember when she did strip tease and she got $12.5 million. And I remember the scrutiny over her body back in the 90s was crazy. Yeah. Every time she had any amount of work done, people talked about it. Her breasts, everybody were always talking about whether they were real or not. Yeah. Um, there was, there was, um, I mean, yeah, she got into crazy shape. The 90s was the time of, you know, Howard Stern literally lining up women in his studio and like, Put, yeah, putting a laser pointer to their to their trouble spots like that's yeah yeah that's the yeah. era that's the era that Demi Moore gained her fame in and it's uh, and like, then you it's remember the most scrutinizing when, time yeah I remember I mean do you remember when she did GI Jane oh, how yeah. much people were like going crazy over the fact that she got into shape and that she looked different and it was it was just it was everywhere at the time you know like it was and I mean don't get me wrong I think she did benefit from it for a certain amount of time. Right, I think when she a lot of her movies she, were based around her sex appeal. Yeah, but I think that when she got a bit older, and she always looked amazing. That was the thing. She still looks amazing. She still looks amazing. That's the irony of the it, role. Is that yeah, she, it is the it is the she irony looks of the great. But but people though she she did get discarded by Hollywood at a certain point though around the year two thousand she just got she could she could barely get arrested she was barely in anything after a while you know and it was so I get her acting in a movie like this is pretty potent. Right. It would be like, you know, like um, if you were to do a movie about like an old action star gone to seed and you cast somebody like Schwarzenegger or something like it's that yeah. that's the kind of thing that like you need that kind of it's an icon playing an iconic role. Right. And I think it is pretty effective. And and it's crazy because Margaret Qualley really does kind of look like Demi Moore did in St. Elmo's Fire, like from that era. Right. Like she does. Kinda. Yeah. I, mean, they, I guess they didn't want to ask Rumor Willis to be in the movie. Right. So I guess I mean that would have been that would have been weird, but uh, but anyway, yeah. 
<laughs> but yeah, I, you know, it, it, the, Demi Moore's casting is fantastic. Like you said, it's it's ironic because she's still absolutely gorgeous, which just goes. And my to- my mom is a fan of hers, and she's like, "Oh, I can't wait to see that movie." The substance, like, I don't, I don't think this is gonna be for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to get some of my friends to see it this weekend, yeah. uh, and I'm like trying to obscure what it's about. So I was telling a friend of mine, I was like, yeah, it's got uh Margaret Qualley and, and Demi Moore is in it. And she plays an aging Hollywood actress who gets fired. And that's like, all I said, that sounds all nice. I said about it. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a tearjerker. I know. That's really. Like- Oh man, that sounds that sounds like my kind of movie. Yeah, great. Yeah, sure. Although the last twenty minutes of the movie are like a psychedelic fever dream. Like, what is oh, even God. happening? That's the only part I don't like. If I'm if I'm being totally yeah. honest, because I was yeah. fully into the rest of the movie. Um, I love the dynamic between <laughs> between Elizabeth and uh, her younger version named Sue. I love that. I love the way it's shot, where you've always kind of got Sue in the frame, like in that big billboard in the background. Elizabeth can't escape her no matter what she does. I kind of like the commentary on how we treat older people as well, uh, how they it really some just don't have a life to live when they lose what you know the thing that made them that gave them their drive when they were younger. They, what else are they supposed to do? Uh, yeah. And I love the commentary on on younger people who are <laughs> like Sue. You know, we'll we'll risk everything. We'll risk the entire future because you know she's young and it's not going to affect her. She doesn't think it will anyway. You know, so she does what she wants. Yeah. To do. And uh, and let's be let's be honest about one other thing. Margaret Qualley is goddamn stunning in this. <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> no, sure, yeah I'm, I'm sure you. I'm sure you missed it. You know, I'm sure you, you overlooked it. I was watching. Uh, and, it look, like, and look, she's. I was watching. She's shot for us to make that kind of comment. Let's be honest. She's shot to look. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean, we're you know we're two guys talking about how hot she is in the movie, but like, yeah. you know, she wasn't she wasn't cast because she's not attractive. Like it's just kind of you know like it doesn't. <laughs> right. Yeah. The yeah, director shoots her a certain kind of way to elicit the kind of reaction that yeah. we are giving it right now. Uh, exactly. So, but but and then afterwards we feel guilty about it. We're like, well, yeah, I guess we're just, I guess we're part of the problem then, aren't we? Yeah, no, we <laughs> probably are. Uh, we almost certainly are. Um, yeah, but we she's, are, she's also she's so. also really good in this. And this, I found it strange that her and Demi Moore have a lot of the same mannerisms, the same energy. They barely share time together on the screen. And uh, I mean, they're great actresses. See, though. They are. They really are. But you can see how they kind of. You could see them as the same person, a younger and a younger and an older version of the same person. Uh, like I said, which is really fantastic considering how they only spend a few minutes together uh, in the. Yeah, I was. I kept thinking of when I saw Margaret Qualley, and I was like saying, like she must have been watching like Saint Almost Fire, One Crazy Summer, Blame It on Rio. Yeah, yeah. Man, awesome. Blame It on Rio. That's a movie that I don't think would get remade nowadays. No, no, <laughs> not. Uh, well, I they did I- remake it. In, they did remake it in France. So that doesn't surprise me. Um, yeah, different there though. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I'm this movie did re- this movie did well at can right? I'm trying to remember. Very well, and it was that's why I first started of- hearing about it. it. Did did it win awards or anything? It did, and it won the it. it and I know that it, at TIFF it won uh, Mad- Midnight Madness. It was the number one Midnight Madness movie, which doesn't surprise me at all. Not at all. I saw some good ones though at TIFF. There's, have you ever heard of Tim Robinson? I think you should leave, guy. I I don't think so. You would like the movie that he had at Midnight Madness with Paul Rudd. It's called Friendship. A twenty four bought it. They're gonna put it out. I think this year. That's gonna be like the next big cult comedy. I think. Okay. And then there was another movie that was called Ick by Joseph Kahn, and um, it starred Joseph, Brent- Joseph Kahn, like the 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 body Fuck. guy. Yeah, embodied. So, and it's like a Night of the Creeps type thing, and it stars Brandon Routh. What else and is Brandon Routh is uh, Brandon Routh is really good. Stealth. It. And, um, yeah, no, no, he did uh, not stealth. He did bodied, and he did detention, and he did torque. Detention. Torque is the movie I'm thinking of. Torque. Yeah, torque. Right. Torque. Yeah. And detention is, is really good. This is like detention is really good. It's pretty cool. It's like so. Brandon Routh plays this like washed up football player from like the early 2000s at his high school and he's a science teacher and the girl that he was in love with is played by mina suvari and they both played themselves as teenagers and in and, and, and the beginning of the movie and um and it's like a big satire of like early 2000s 
but yeah. then mixed like a monster movie and um <laughs> brandon Ruff is actually really good in it like he's very he's very funny in it sweet i'm pretty yeah. excited for for middleburg coming up in a in a few weeks we're gonna have some of those tiff movies there saturday night. are you saying brutalist the night will be there so i'm really excited about that what will be there saturday night that's a really good one and do you see are you seeing the brutalist I don't know. I don't know if that's on the on the schedule yet. They haven't released the full schedule, so we'll see. Yeah, the Brutalist. Uh, I, if, I, I'll, if I'm going to see the Brutalist, it'll probably be the only movie I see that day. So we'll see. <laughs> I, I, the only movie that I saw that day at TIFF, I was supposed to go see something else afterwards, and after like four hours of that, I was like, "Fuck no, I need a break." Yeah, I need uh, time to digest. It's a full meal. Yeah. So what do you think the prospects of the substance though? Because I feel like this is going to be like. I don't know what it's going to do like in its initial release or anything, but it seems like one of those movies is going to be a cult favorite that gets played. Yeah, I think so. I think it'll do well in limited release. Like, I think it'll be like a word of mouth thing. Like, people are going to go and it'll play for a while. Right. I don't think it's going to be a huge money maker. I mean, it's a movie film, so it's going to go to streaming. But I think movie is going to handle it really well. Like, I feel like it's going to be playing in the art houses probably for months. They're probably not going to drop it on streaming until the awards until awards season. I feel like it's going to be one that's going to be around a lot in like the art house theaters, so that you know for the next couple months it'll always be playing somewhere and it'll do pretty well. And I think they'll give it a serious push during awards season, which they should because I could see Demi Moore easily be, getting a best actress. It could be a surprise, it. I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, I could totally see that happening. Especially if you can get, convince people to not watch the last 20 minutes of the movie, which is terrible. Even Quali could theoretically get a supporting actress nomination, so who knows? But I think that Demi yeah, Moore would be you no know, I feel no like movie. her role is, even though she's in it a lot, I still feel like her role is very, very thin. Well, I mean, it's Demi Moore's movie. I mean, she'll but get the nomination. It's a movie for her. I would laugh if Dennis Quaid got nominated for it, though. <laughs> Being so completely insane in it. I'd rather give him an award for this than for Reagan. <laughs> Might win a Razzie for Reagan. I got so many goddamn emails about Reagan. Yeah, I because I, I shit on it really bad. So of course, conservatives got really angry with me. I, I posted. One the only, I posted one the, the only one thing that that one guy sent me because he sent me messages before, but he, you know it's like oh, you, 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 you libtard, blah 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 blah, all that kind of stuff. Good good luck voting for for Kamala, and I'm like. Okay, I will. Thanks. I mean, what you want? I think that? it's one of the few one of the few movies I ever saw that that comes out in support of the blacklist. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ridiculous wish fulfillment movie. It, it treats him like he's a goddamn superhero, and like he was literally by, by God like Jesus. From God. But like Jesus, it's very religious. More they so, probably than Reagan everything they they ignore or sidestep everything. Like I feel I, he, like even Reagan, I feel like he would watch that movie and he'd be like, "Well, they're right. laying it on a little I thing." Like, I don't know about that. <laughs> you know, like Grand uh, Contra. I, I mean, just all this crap. It's like, just just get get this crap out of here. And, and the thing is, I don't care it. that people. I, I I tried. I replied to the guy. I was like, "I'm glad you liked the movie, man. It just wasn't for me." Yeah. Like, I don't care. I don't give a shit if, if if Reagan fans like the Reagan movie. I would expect them to. He's like he's got a hundred percent on on That's Rotten Tomatoes. Cool. And I'm like, it's not like you're. It's not. Its fans are supposed to like it. That's who it's made for. I'm glad you like it, dude. <laughs> it's not like you're picketing the theater. Don't go in. Not allowing them to go into the theater. It's like it's you know. It's like yeah, of course. Yeah, it's crazy. It's all crazy, but whatever. Anyway, the Re I mean, Reagan, everybody's so divided. Reagan's got nothing on the substance. Dennis Quaid is better in the substance than he is in Reagan. I love Dennis Quaid in the substance, man. He was great in it. It was like it was like I haven't I Dennis Quaid to, that much. I don't want to watch me shrimp again, but because uh, that shit made me queasy too. But uh... <laughs> I haven't liked Dennis Quaid that much since Great Balls of Fire. <laughs> Doa. Oh man, the substance is a lot of fun. I think people are gonna really have a good time with this one uh even the part of the movie that i don't like i understand why other people will appreciate it even if i didn't i i liked it because i thought it just went completely insane and i like that you know it was like yeah. it was, I was in, like, in some cases i do but i felt like this one was walking a pretty good line of making its point and being gross you know and being insightful and then it was just like fuck it like at the end so i was just kind of like uh but you know, I have to say for a movie that's two and a half hours long it flies by it definitely doesn't feel like it at all no doesn't feel like that long at all not not even close 
Oh man, the substance. Uh it's open to theaters on September 20th. Uh so if you're probably hearing this now, it might already be in theaters. You should definitely go and check it out. Just like don't eat anything right before oh, or right after. No, don't eat anything. If you gotta like, don't watch it on a plane. This is not a movie to watch on a plane, too. If you see it on a plane, I feel like that's a mistake. Uh, no, don't do that either. If you got an issue with needles or birthing scenes or you know, but just bodily fluids in general. Uh, yeah, you might want to. They're all in there. They're all in there. <laughs> go in, with a, go in with as empty of a stomach as you can find, and you'll be all right. It's like she didn't. It is a director. She didn't make a like. She went hardcore. She went all the way on this movie. Like it's not. She didn't leave anything out. Yeah, and if you can see, if you have a chance to see Revenge, you should go check that out too. It's a very, very cool uh, feminist. Uh, revenge movie so i've got it in one of the neon box sets so I'd definitely watch it one night yeah you should all right chris you got anything coming up that we need to know about well i just finished i just wrapped all my tiff reviews i got the i got excuse me i got interviews with the saturday night live cast saturday night cast coming out um nice. got interviews that i'm really excited about that aren't actually coming out until december because one of the movies i liked the most the tiff was um better man the robbie williams biopic yeah, and and uh, I did interviews with them, with him and the director and stuff like that, and that was and those were great. Um, but that movie is crazy. That movie, like, I I've been telling people the whole premise of the film, and nobody people think I'm joking, making a bad joke. But it's Robbie Williams is played by a CGI chimpanzee in the movie. I'm not yeah, kidding. I've, yeah, I've heard about that. So i I don't know yeah and it's not and it works and it works but it's a dumb gimmick to me but other people have said it's not so but it works really really well and the thing is you watch it though and it's like this cgi chimpanzee designed by weta you know going around doing blow and like and it's like this is like the best planet of the apes movie i ever saw like it's just like it's the craziest planet of the apes movie ever (laughs) like caesar gets gets really like oak you know, like and it's <laughs> and partying. <laughs> you know, it's like the oh, craziest man. movie ever. All right, my friend. Well, I need to. I hope we get a chance to hang out together soon. Uh, it's been too long. Yeah, I hope they'll maybe there'll be like a CCA trip for like Amelia Perez or something like that. We'll get to we'll get to to get to hang out. That'd be nice. Or we come to the celebration of Black Cinema in December or something. I hope so. If I if they pay my ticket, I'll come like they did last time. It was awesome when Netflix did that thing. Maybe they'll do an event for it for a piano lesson or something like yeah, that. Maybe. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. We need to hang out sometime soon. Because we got All to right. meet last time. We met. We met. We met Wesley Snipes. Fucking Tarantino. That was yeah. an amazing night. That was crazy. Yeah, we need to do that again for sure. Yeah, uh, and not bring any any uh, baggage with this. All right, uh, my friend, this has been a lot of fun. We talked about the substance. It is in theaters on September 20th. Go and check it out. That is Chris Bumbray at JillBow.com. Check him out there as well. I'm Travis Hobson. You can find me every day at PunchDrunkCritics.com. If you're in the D.C. area on Fridays and on WETA around town, that's every month. Uh, On your Fridays on Channel 7 uh, at noon. All right, everybody. We will see you again soon. Goodbye. Thanks for checking out the show. If you like what we're laying down, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest stuff. 